Okay, looks like we are live. Let me check my cell phone to make sure that it's coming in here on a couple of different Facebook profiles that we're on. All right, looks like we're live. We should have a lot of people here joining us here in just a second. Uh, today, we're going to go over what do you do? Like, what questions do you need to ask in your voicemails? Like, what do you say when you cold call and leave a voicemail? What do you say when you call leads, maybe outbound leads or even inbound leads, and you leave a voicemail? And what do you say in your text messages that will actually trigger your prospects to want to call you back? Okay. What are those questions? What do you need to say? So it looks like we're live here. Let me post a comment. Make sure that comes through. Okay, yeah, looks like I'm I'm here on uh, YouTube as well. All right, coming through. All right, awesome. All right, now if you're brand new today, this is going to be really exciting for you to be on. Uh, we're going to cover if you're if you just tune in, we're going to cover what to say, what to ask in your voicemails, whether it's cold calling or calling leads that actually triggers the prospects to actually want to call you back. Okay, how do you do that? What do you say? It's also going to work for text messages as well. Now, if you're brand new to our Facebook group or maybe you're seeing me on YouTube for the first time, or maybe even my personal Facebook profile. Sometimes we stream to all three locations and Instagram on here as well. I am the founder and chairman of 7th Level. We're a company that helps salespeople like you, sales professionals like you. We help salespeople, coaches, sales executives, management, leadership, and business owners transform the way you and your team sell by using techniques and questions that work with human behavior rather than against it. There's a big distinction in that, and we'll cover that in a second. What does it mean to use questions that work with human behavior? Now, we call these neuro-emotional persuasion questions, okay? Now, what does that mean? They have to be asked at the right time with the right tone that trigger your prospect to actually want to engage with you. What does that actually mean? How do you have the right tonality that puts your prospects at ease when you first start talking to them, eliminates sales pressure, just takes it right out of the conversation where they want to open up and get your prospects to persuade and sell themselves and cause them to want to engage, to want to open up to you and to want to actually share what's going on in the world to see if you can actually help them. There's a magical difference that. Now, along the way, if you want to learn more details about NEPQ and about how we can help your you or your company sell a lot more of your products and services as well, if you're an individual salesperson or a manager or a business owner, in the comment section, just post hashtag NEPQ, post hashtag NEPQ, and either me or someone on our team can message you more details to see if we can help you as well sell a lot more of your products and services like we have for thousands of clients the last two years. Now, if you're on here live right now, I want you to post hashtag live. So if you're on live, post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I want you to post hashtag replay. So if you're on live right now, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, I want you to post hashtag replay. And if you're on live or replay right now, I want each of you to smash the heart button. So I want each of you to smash the heart button several times. And I want each of you to smash the like button. So everybody smash the like button, smash the heart button. The reason why we have you do that is it creates more engagement in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. More people are able to see this and actually learn how to do what I'm about to go over. Get people to call you back from your voicemails. Holy crap, because I know most of you struggle with that. Most of our clients do when they first come with us. It's just one little aspect. Now, if you are not in our Facebook group, if you're watching me on YouTube right now, or you're watching me on my Instagram right now going live, or if you're watching on my personal, it looks like there's about 55 of you on so far, 57. If you're watching me on my personal profile and you want to join our Facebook group, I'm going to have Chris here drop a link to our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You're welcome to join that. We do a lot of training in there about four to five times a week with what I'm about to cover and a lot of other subjects. So you can join the Facebook group. You'll ask a couple of questions in the survey about what you sell, what industry ends, we better know you. We have about 5,700 people or so in that Facebook group in the last six months. And we'll post that here for you to join as well if you're not already in our private Facebook group. Now, let's get to the good stuff here real quick. What do you do to get people to return your voicemails and your text messages? Now, I'm gonna give you two different examples. In the first example, I'm going to do it. It's a little bit different if you cold call. Now, what do I mean by cold call? 
That means picking up the phone, calling a business or calling somebody who knows, who knows, who does not know who you are, who's never requested information from you, who's never booked on your calendar, who's never responded to anything. It's a cold call. Leaving a voicemail for somebody like that is a little bit different than if you're just calling an outbound or inbound lead to leave a voicemail. I'm going to show you both of those. First of all, I'm going to show you how to do it when you're cold calling. And then second of all here, after we get done with that in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to do it when you're calling leads that have responded to information, request information off your website, maybe responded to some type of ad your company advertises for, you're calling them back, they don't answer, you give them a voicemail, or maybe they book on your calendar, don't show up and you're calling them back. There's a little bit of a difference and you have to know what questions to ask when you leave the voicemail. Otherwise, you got about a 99% chance that they are never going to call you back. Okay. That can all be stopped. Probably get half of the people to call you back is a lot better for you and you make a lot more sales from that. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk to you about how to navigate through a company, throughout a company, if you sell B2B to actually find your prospect if they don't answer, and if you can't find them, what to say in your voicemail and a text that's going to get them to want to call you back. And then, like I said, we're going to go exactly what to say in a voicemail if you're just calling leads straight out who might have responded to your company's ad requesting more information or something inbound or outbound leads. There's a little bit of a different there, like I mentioned. Now, let's talk about an overview of this first. Most salespeople leave voicemails because they want to avoid the feeling of being rejected, especially with cold calling. By not going back to the receptionist, if you sell B2B, we avoid being challenged and rejected by them. Now, what do most salespeople do? They play the numbers game. They make a lot of calls because that makes them feel that somehow they worked harder that day. But just because you make a lot of calls doesn't mean those translate into sales if you don't know the right questions to ask that gets the prospect to want to engage. Remember, in what we train you, we are only focused on whether or not we can actually help this prospect. We are not focused on just making the sale. That comes as a byproduct of that. We have to detach from the expectations of just closing a deal, making a commission, and instead focus on whether or not we can actually help that person, that prospect. Now with that mindset, it makes it very easy for us to go back to the receptionist if we're cold calling and get their voicemail and ask for help. I'm gonna show you how to navigate throughout a company, B2B, if you're looking for a prospect and you don't wanna just leave a voicemail, and then I'm gonna show you how to leave voicemails for all types of different leads. You've probably never heard this before. So you're gonna go back to the receptionist and you're gonna ask this question. Um, this is after you got their voicemail and they didn't answer and you left a message. You're gonna go then go back to the receptionist and do this. Um, hey, Jane, it's just uh, Jeremy again. I was wondering if you could um, help me out for a second. I was just trying to get a hold of Alex and I left uh, and I got his voicemail. Would you happen to know if he's in a meeting or possibly at lunch or even on vacation by chance? Now, notice what did I just do there? Would you happen to know if he's in a meeting or possibly at lunch or even on vacation by chance? Notice I'm not asking them to find Alex. Notice I'm not asking them, where is Alex? I'm offering possible solutions to find Alex. And that creates zero pressure placed on the receptionist. It's just a normal conversation. Now, when you ask those three questions, the receptionist is gonna give you one of three answers. Oh, he's in a meeting right now, or he's at lunch right now, sir, or he's out of town on vacation, or he's on a business trip, okay? Now, they could also say, no, I don't know where Alex is today. In this case, you just reply with a, a very low-key statement such as this. Yeah, that's not a problem. This type of relaxed statement diffuses the pressure the receptionist might be feeling. Remember, her full-time job is to usually ward salespeople off her boss. That's what she's been trained to do. That's one of her aspects of her job. Then after you say, that's not a problem, then you would say, by chance, would you happen to know anyone close to his desk or office who works in his area that would know where he is or when he would be available? Let me repeat that. By chance, would you happen to know anyone close to his desk or office who works in his area that would know where he is and when he might be available? Now here, you're just offering another option to the receptionist. Many times they will say yes and transfer you to someone whose office is close to where Alex or your prospect is. Now the reception could also say, no, I don't know where he is. 
even if they really do know where he is, they might be trying to protect him from a salesperson like you. That's what they're trying to do. Then you would actually say something like this. You would just simply say, that's not a problem. And then you could say, would you, would, uh, would, by chance, would you have his cell phone handy to see if I could be, see, to see if I could reach him? You say like this, that's not a problem. Uh, would you by chance have his cell phone handy so I could try to reach him? Now, sometimes you will be surprised. Usually about 30% of receptions will just give you their cell phone number because it's such a conversation that's going on with you that there's some trust there. You relieve the sales pressure. Sometimes they won't. Okay. And they'll say, no, we don't give out sales, uh, cell phone numbers. You simply say, okay, that's not a problem. I appreciate your time. Um, would it be better if I just left him a voicemail and see if he would, if he's available to call back? And they say, yeah, just leave him a voicemail. And then you go right back and you leave him a voicemail. Now, and I'm going to show you what you're going to say in that voicemail. Now I will tell you, I have trained salespeople and organizations who thought it was rude to call a prospect on their cell phone. But why is that? Well, if you still have the, I want to say the mindset of you're just there to wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and like make a sale, throw it over your back, make a commission using outdated sales techniques, and you're chasing the sale with the mantra of the ABCs of closing, always be closing, it's clearly going to cause you to feel that it is rude to do that. But when you're only focused on them, to see if you can actually help them and what they're looking for and do they have problems they might not even have any problems you don't have the same anxiety about calling them on their cell or even calling them on vacation because you're doing them a favor you're trying to see if you can help them solve their problems okay now your prospects i will tell you won't feel anxious either because they feel that you're focused on them as opposed to just stuffing your solution down their throat and when they feel that intent they start to trust you. They start to view you as more of that authority or expert figure, okay? That is how you easily navigate throughout an entire company using NEPQ questions. Now, why do you want to do that? Because you're asking questions in a very calm, relaxed tone, collective confidence. You're not putting anyone on the spot or getting them defensive, okay, which will cause them to throw up the walls of resistance. Now, let's say that you still cannot locate your prospect, the person, the decision maker you're trying to get a hold of, even after navigating through the entire organization, because that's going to happen sometimes. At this point, it's appropriate to leave a voicemail. So you want to make sure you call in if you can't get a hold of the prospect and leave a voicemail. Now, you're not going to leave like a regular voicemail with a mini sales pitch or offer how great your solution is because they're just going to view you as another salesperson who's trying to sell them something and they're never going to call you back. Very rare, unless it's a lay down sale. Most people are not going to call you back if you do that. Let me give you an example of the right type of voicemail to locate a potential customer. And in this example, I'm going to give you something industry specific. Let's say that you have a service that helps companies, like some type of software that helps companies reduce their expenses from their vendors, like some type of calculation device that does that. We train a lot of companies in that space too. Here's how you'd leave that type of voicemail. And once again, just apply it to your industry. You'd, here's the voicemail. Um, hey, Alex, this is just um, Jeremy. I was wondering if you could help me out for a moment. And I'm not sure if you are the right person or not, but I'm trying to reach the person who's responsible for looking to see whether any department in your company might be losing revenue to vendors overcharging you. Now, if that's something your company could be experiencing, you're welcome to call me back. My number is XYZ, XYZ. I should be available here for a little bit today if you'd like to reach me. Now, let me repeat that voicemail. Okay. Uh, hey, Alex, this is just uh, Jeremy. I was wondering if you could possibly help me out for a moment. You act confused. And I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure if you're the right person or not, but I was trying to reach the person who's responsible for, uh, in your department, in your company, who's responsible for looking to see whether any department in your company might be losing revenue to vendors overcharging you. Whatever that problem is, you plug that in. That's an industry specific problem for like a, a type of software company that we train, okay? Now, at the end of that, you say, if that's something your company could be experiencing, so you're still neutral, you're welcome to call me back. My number is XYZ, XYZ. I should be available here for a little bit today. Now, this wording creates curiosity. You're not going into your sales pitch. 
Notice I said who's responsible. I'm not, I'm just, I'm trying to reach the person who's responsible for looking and you mentioned your compelling problem statement to see whether any department in your company might be losing revenue due to vendors overcharging. Now you're not going to say it that fast. It's going to be much more slowed down. Okay. Now, if you're in our NEPQ 3.0 or advanced inner circle trainings, we train you all that, how to make that industry specific. I just gave you a random example. And then you say, if that's something your company could be experiencing, notice I'm not assuming. Notice if that's something your company could be experiencing, you're welcome to call me back. My number is blah, 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 blah. I should be available here for a little bit today. Now, do you think they might be curious enough to what you mean by not losing revenue to vendors overcharging them? That's going to cause people curiosity. We're like, what does he mean? Or what is that? And they're going to call you back. That's one way you do that. And that's on a cold call, not even a lead calling. I'm going to show you the difference in just a second. But do you think your prospect is going to be interested in not losing money to vendors overcharging or whatever you offer? Okay. Now let's go over how to leave an effective voicemail when you're calling your leads because it's a little bit different. Uh, somebody on YouTube said, believe in yourself. Hi, Jeremy. And it is most certainly does inspire curiosity. That's what it's in supposed to do. Your voicemails have to get them curious enough where they feel like if they don't call you, they are missing something that could be very important. That's not going into your pitch. That's not talking about your solution. That's talking about what we call your compelling problem statement. We train you how to do that in our NEPQ 3.0 advanced training programs. If you cold call to come up with the problem statement and tie it into what you sell industry specific and our advanced, advanced inner circle. Now, how do we do this leaving a voicemail with leads? Somebody that's requested information. First of all, we have to be detached as well. We're detached from the expectations of just clobbering over them head to make a commission. And instead we're focused on whether or not we can actually help them. Now let's pretend for a second, I'm gonna give you another industry specific example. Let's pretend for a second that you sell business opportunities or you sell franchises or something. Train a lot of companies in this space as well. And let's say that this prospect responded to a website left their name, email, and phone number, asking for somebody to call them back, requesting more information. And let's say you call them and they don't answer and it goes to voicemail. What do you do? I'm also gonna show you a shortened version of this to text them after you leave the voicemail. Okay, here's how you leave the voicemail. Um, hi, Mary, you, uh, this is just uh, Jeremy Miner with uh, XYZ uh, Franchises. Looks like you had responded to one of our ads uh, on Facebook a few hours ago about possibly starting your own franchise. You would have seen our logo for XYZ company on the site. And I just had time uh, to get back to you to see if I could possibly help. Now, my phone number is XYZ XYZ. I should be available here for a little bit today if you'd like to reach me. Talk to you then. And let me repeat that. And I'm going to break it down point by point of why we're doing it. Uh, hey, Mary, this is just uh, Jeremy Miner with uh, XYZ uh, Franchises. Looks like you had responded to one of our ads on LinkedIn a few hours ago about possibly starting your own franchise. You would have seen our logo XYZ company on the site. And I was calling you back to see if we could possibly help. Now, my phone number is XYZ XYZ XYZ. I should be available here uh, for a little bit today um, if you'd like to reach me. Talk to you then. Now, let's break down why I did what I did in that voicemail. First of all, you have to be, when somebody requests information off a website and you just have a name and phone number and you're calling them back, you have to be as specific as possible to remind them that they responded to your company's ad looking for whatever you offer. Why do we wanna be as specific as possible? Because they probably also responded to maybe two or three or four other people's ads that same day about other things and if you don't remind them, they get busy and they get distracted. And sometimes they just forget they even responded, especially if you're calling the lead back more than 24 hours later. Okay. Keep in mind that they're probably getting calls from others trying to sell them other things as well. So they automatically have their guard up when they answer your call, even if they're really interested in what you have to offer. So you're going to reference exactly what they responded about. In this case, if you sold franchises, you're going to reference that they responded about possibly starting their own franchise. Now, why would you say possibly there? Why wouldn't you just say, looks like you responded to our ad, you know, really interested in franchises or interested in franchises. When you use the word possibly, 
it's a neutral word. It's neutral languaging. And we want to be neutral when we are communicating to our prospects. We don't want to be so positive and so assumptive that it's going to trigger some people to have sales resistance. And we don't want to be negative either, of course. That wouldn't work either. So we have to be neutral. We're non-biased about possibly uh, starting your own franchise. When we use the word possibly, it diffuses any sales pressure. Because if you called back and you said this, looks like you were looking for a franchise. That's more assumptive. And with certain type of personalities, especially A-types, it's going to trigger some defensiveness. They might say, well, we're not really sure yet. Or, well, we're just, we wanted to see what you offered. Or we're just kind of looking around. When you say possibly... They don't say those words because it doesn't trigger any like, oh, I need to put up the wall. This guy's trying to sell me something or this guy or gal. Does that make sense? Now, you can also use the, the language like I was just calling you back to see if I could possibly help you. Same thing. Possibly help you is neutral languaging. Your focus is on them and what they're actually looking for. You're just there to see if you can help. You're not focused on just trying to make a sale and clobber them over the head. Then you're going to leave your phone number. And to create urgency for them to call you back, you simply say, and I should be available here for a little bit today. I should be available here for a little bit today. When you say I should be available for a little bit, it implies what? It implies that you are busy. You're not just sitting by the phone waiting for them to call you back the whole day. Okay. You don't want to look desperate. Okay. So do those things. And the same thing is in your text. If they, if they don't answer and you leave a voicemail, you simply text them the same thing. Hey, Mary, this is just Jeremy with XYZ Company. Looks like you had responded uh, to one of our ads uh, a few hours ago on LinkedIn about possibly starting your own franchise business. I just called, left you a voicemail. I should be available here for a little bit today on this number if you'd like to reach me. And that's it. And notice how many people text you back and call you back. Now, if you've got a few more minutes, I'm going to give you another example in a little bit different way. Okay, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something a little bit different. Okay, What do you actually do if you call the prospect and they answer and they say, I'm too busy to talk right now? Does that ever happen to anybody on here? I'm assuming it does. Okay, Prospect, let me show you how to handle that. Prospect says, now, if you're in our NEPQ 3.0 training or advanced inner circle, all of this times 10,000 is in that virtual training course. I'm just giving you a little hors d'oeuvre right here, okay? Let's say the prospect says, they answer the phone and says, you know, I'm really busy, can you just can you just call me back? Here's what you do. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, what I can do is give you my number and you'll have to call me back, I guess, here in a while to see if I'd be available for you. Would that help you? Uh, uh, sure, yeah, what's your number? Okay, my number is 573-655-45465. Now, John, what's your time frame on getting back to me today just to see if I'd be available for you? Now, why do we do that? Asking them what their time frame is on getting back to you is a powerful question that helps you position you as an expert, as an authority figure, the expert in the market. It makes you appear that you are busy with other clients. You are not needy. And they start to view you as someone that they should do something with. They start to view you as having valuable time rather than just putting you, pushing you to the side as just another salesperson trying to sell them something. Now, the prospect, after you give them that number and ask them what their time frame is on getting back to you, is going to say something like this. Oh, I can probably get back to you sometime later this week. That doesn't work because they're not going to call you sometime later in the week. You're just going to be sitting around waiting for their call. No. Here's what you do. Well, you know, I'm, I'm typically not available like that randomly. Um, I don't know if I'd be available then. I tell you what, um, if it helps you, um, I can pull up my, I've got my calendar handy if you can pull up yours and you're welcome to book a specific time with me. That way you don't have to chase me down and vice versa. Would that be appropriate? Now, what do we do there? Positions you as the trusted authority whose time is valuable not just another salesperson they can throw over their shoulder and try to avoid. So I'm going to go over that again. Well, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't be available randomly like that. Um, I tell you what, if you have your calendar handy, I can uh, pull up mine and you're welcome to book a specific time with me. That way you don't have to chase me down and vice versa. Would that be appropriate? And they're going to say, yeah, and you book a specific time. Now, when that time comes, let's say it's the next day at two, 
You don't call them right at two. Now, if they don't call you right at two, you wait about two to three minutes after two, and then you call them, okay? So I wanted to make sure you notice the difference on how to leave effective voicemails. So here's what we went over today in the Facebook Live. How to leave effective voicemails when you're cold calling. How to navigate through an entire organization if you sell B2B and you're cold calling. What to do and how to leave a voicemail if they don't, if you can't navigate and find them in the organization. We also went how to leave voicemails for leads who request information that don't answer. And then what do you actually say if a prospect answers the phone and says, I'm too busy right now, can you call me back later? I hope that helped everybody for you. Is that your, Chris says, is that your actual number? No, that is not my actual number. So if you text that number, it's not going to go to my personal cell phone. Hope that helped everybody today. I think all told we had 74, 75 people through uh, Facebook, our Facebook group, my private Facebook group, YouTube. And I think we were on IG for a little bit. So that's good. That's not bad. A lot of people will see this role play. Now, if you want more details about how we can help you sell a lot more of your products and services as well, like we have for thousands, in the comment section, just post hashtag NEPQ, hashtag NEPQ, and either myself or someone on my team can you message you more details about how we can help you sell a lot more of your products and services as well, if that's what you want. You don't have to learn how to sell more. You can always sell where you are now. It's a free world, right? Now, if you're not in our Facebook group as well, because I notice, I know a lot of you on here, it looks like about half of you are on here in the Facebook group, the other half are on YouTube, my personal Facebook and IG. If you're not in our Facebook group and you want to join Sales Revolution, I'm going to have Chris, Mike VG said, this was amazing. I'm going to rewatch it again. You're welcome. Believe in yourself. I have an abundance of time. I've been trying to get outside, but that was a guarantee that I'd be glued to the tube for hours and, you're, and I'm not complaining. Well done. If you want to know uh, more details, if you want to join our Facebook group, I'm going to have Chris post a link here to our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You can just click on the button. A couple of questions we ask you, what industry, what you're wanting to accomplish. And then we send you a free 30 minute training on how to prevent objections from even happening that you can watch. We don't even charge you for it just by joining the Facebook group. All right, everybody, thanks for being on. Now, tomorrow, there is a rumor that I'm going live tomorrow with one of our clients. We do that every week, at least once or twice every week. We interview a new client. We're going to be interviewing a guy tomorrow that went from a making about six to seven thousand a month in commissions personally to now making about forty thousand a month in commissions. We train his entire company. He's a sales manager now for that company, general manager. We train his entire company now. They're up in Canada. Uh, during COVID, their company was locked out. So in Canada right now, most businesses, unless it's essential, are locked down. His company was locked down. So how did, how did, they, how did they increase sales by 160% in the last 12 months using NEPQ when nobody can even come into their store? and that's where they make their sales. So we're gonna interview that tomorrow. We're gonna to dissect his sales process with NEPQ that we wrote out for his company and all of his salespeople that work there. So tune in, that's gonna to be tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. We will go live right here in the Facebook group. I hope that helps everybody. Thanks for having me on, it was awesome today, I appreciate you.